Good evening and welcome to the third session on the discussion on Marxist literary theory. Aaj ke amra je vishoye ta ni kotha bolbo seta hocche duto alada alada theory which are related to the concept of the operation of power in the state structure or in other words how does the state which is considered as a machinery of repression in marxist theory how does it function to dominate its citizens so what are the tools or what are the instruments of domination mane kono ekta rashtro tar nagorikder ke niyontron korbar jonno ki poddhotir madhye kaj kore ebong tar je method ba sei prokriya ta ki dhoroner hoy sei bishoy ta niye ajke amra muloto alochonay jabo now one thing we have to understand that we have already we have already discussed in the last uh, previous discussions that marxism as an academic discipline that emerged in the western academia only after the collapse of the soviet union and the socialist bloc of the eastern europe so the debacle or the decline of marxism as a political alternative that parallels the rise of marxism as an academic discipline ebon shei karone amra dekhchi je ei neo marxism ba jeta motamoti bhabe which comes mostly in the uh 1960s 70s 80s and 90s as an alternative to soviet school and the chinese school of marxism which are the dom which were the dominant political systems so these theories they prefer to look at the ideological and cultural implications of marxism because their emphasis was more on superstructure than the base that is what is or how does this class relationship or how does the state function in the realm of culture in order to dominate its citizens and along with this concept of state and state machinery there is one idea which is very pertinent for our contemporary understanding of the political scenario or the social scenario of any age that is the role of the intellectuals যেটাকে বাংলায় আমরা বলি বুদ্ধিজীবী এখন এই বুদ্ধিজীবী বা ইন্টেলেকচুয়াল এদের সম্পর্কে আমাদের কতগুলো ধারণা আছে নাম্বার ওয়ান দ্যাট দিজ ইন্টেলেকচুয়ালস আর দ্য ইন্ডিপেন্ডেন্ট পার্সনস দিজ নাম্বার টু দিজ ইন্টেলেকচুয়ালস আর দ্য কনশিয়াস অফ দ্য সোসাইটি বা সমাজের বিবেক number 3 these intellectuals they always speak against all forms of injustice of the state of the power and number 4 the intellectuals they help the mass to or rather they show the way to resist and to rebel against the society so intellectuals as independent intellectuals as rebels and intellectuals as progressive 
तो समवन हु आर आउटसाइड द कंट्रोल ऑफ द स्टेट और इन स्पाइट ऑफ द कंट्रोल ऑफ द स्टेट दे कुड दे कुड फंक्शन इंडिपेंडेंटली एक और तो बोलो होते हैं शादरन भावे आमादेर धारुना अबाउट द इंटेलेक्चुअल्स बट डू द इंटेलेक्चुअल्स रियली फंक्शन इंडिपेंडेंट ऑफ द पावर रिलेशंस इन द स्टेट और तात ए जे जे शासन व्यवस्था को ना एक ता देशेर मध्य रोए ची एवं शिखाने जे डोमिनेंट पॉलिटिकल सिस्टेम आजी शुद्धी शुद्धी की बुद्धिजीविरा वा इंटेलेक्चुअल रातर बायरेगीय फंक्शन को ते पारेन दैट इस द क्वेश्चन वी नीड टू आस्क now in the formation of the intellectuals now i'd request you to i'd request you to read this essay by the italian marxist antonio gramsci so because in this particular essay gramsci has given or rather he renders the formation the process of formation and the role of this intellectual as a class as a section as a group in the society now he talks about a particular group of intellectuals whom he termed or defined as the organic intellectuals ekhon dekha jak je organic intellectual bolte gramsci kader kotha bolte chaichen now i quote from the formation of the intellectuals every social group coming into existence on the original terrain of an essential function in the world of economic production creates together with itself organically one or more strata of intellectuals which give it homogeneity and an awareness of its own functions not only in the economic but also in the social and political fields so therefore every class along with its development along with its function in the process of economic production it creates a group of people who are called the organic intellectuals now what is the function of that intellectual that is the function of the intellectuals to act as the spokesperson or sometimes it's the mediator between this particular group along with other social groups and the function of the intellectuals is to motivate and to propagate the very interest and ideology of this particular social group so for example when there was this feudalism when feudalism was the dominant political system so there was actually a group of intellectuals whom gramsci designated as the ecclesiastics ecclesiastics means that those people who are the experts of theology মানে মোট কথা যদি বলতে গেলে আমরা ধর্মগুরু বা ধর্মীয় বিষয়ের ব্যাখ্যাকার মানে যারা ধর্ম নিয়ে বিভিন্ন আলোচনা তত্ত্ব ইত্যাদি হাজির করেন তারা ঐতিহাসিকভাবে দেখা যাচ্ছে হিস্টোরিক্যালি ইট ইজ সিন দ্যাট দে আর ফাংশনিং অ্যাজ the mediator or the spokesperson of the landed aristocracy the feudal lords tade shonge ei ecclesiastics ba dhormo 
বিশেষজ্ঞ বা ধর্মগুরুদের একটা ঐতিহাসিক এবং আনইন্টারাপ্টেড অবিচ্ছেদ্য একটা সম্পর্ক রয়েছে সুতরাং আমরা যদি ভাবি যে এই সমস্ত বুদ্ধিজীবীরা এদের বক্তব্যগুলো একেবারেই এদের ব্যক্তিগত বক্তব্য গ্রামসি বলছেন এরকমটা নয় এরা যে বক্তব্যগুলো রাখছেন তারা সেটা আসলে তারা যে বিশেষ শ্রেণী বা ক্লাস তাদের প্রতিনিধিত্ব করেন দে অ্যাকচুয়ালি ভয়েস আপট দ্য আইডিওলজি অ্যাজ ওয়েল অ্যাজ ওপিনিয়ন্স অফ the class to whom they are affiliated that is what gramshi is trying to say now this here gramshi has talked about this very relationship between the intellectuals along with the political system now here the why is why is a uh, such construction of the group of intellectuals why is it needed can you know, why did the dominant political power or the social class constructs the group of intellectuals or in other words the organic intellectuals now here gramshi has given an important concept which was very important for to understand the function of the modern state ba rashtrir kaj korbar je prokriya কিভাবে রাষ্ট্র হচ্ছে কাজ করে আধুনিক রাষ্ট্র সেটা বোঝার জন্য খুব জরুরি একটা বিষয় দ্যাট গ্রামশি টকস অ্যাবাউট অল অফ ইউ আর ফিম পার্যাপস ফেমিলিয়ার উইথ দিস টার্ম গ্রামশি টকড অ্যাবাউট দ্য আইডিয়া অফ হেজেমনি হেজেমনি দ্য ওয়ার্ড অ্যাকচুয়ালি মিন্স দ্যাট ডমিনেশন বাই কনসেপ্ট সো হোয়াট কাইন্ড অফ ডমিনেশন নাও হিয়ার what gramshi has tried to say he has actually sort of uh, talked about the two societies one is the political societies and other one is a civil society now regarding the function of the intellectuals and the types that what exactly these uh, the state machinery function সেটা বলতে গিয়ে গ্রামশি বলছেন আই কোট ফ্রম ইস এস এ দ্য ফরমেশন অফ দ্য ইন্টেলেকচুয়ালস দ্যাট দ্য ইন্টেলেকচুয়ালস আর ডমিনেন্ট গ্রুপস ডেপুটিস সো জাস্ট মার্ক দ্য ওয়ার্ড ডেপুটিস ডেপুটিস মিন্স দ্য স্পোকস পারসন রেপ্রেজেন্টেটিভস মিডিয়েটার্স হোয়াট এভার এজেন্টস সো ডেপুটিস এক্সারসাইজিং দ্য সাবল্ট অ্যান্ড ফাংশনস অফ সোশ্যাল হেজেমনি অ্যান্ড political government these comprise number 1 the spontaneous consent given by the great masses of the population to the general direction imposed on social life by the dominant fundamental group the consent is historically caused by the prestige and consequent confidence which the dominant group enjoys because of its position and function in the world of production so it's very important that is domination by consent so consent means that some there are things which we accept without any kind of doubt or without questioning because these ideas are being presented to us as something which is natural so previously there was the concept that king as is actually the representative of god so you cannot question cannot rebel against the king because if you if you if you 
protest. If you question the kings, that means you are questioning God. Similar idea was that the church was actually a representative of God. So something like church as the temple of God. So questioning church, questioning clerics, questioning uh, pope, questioning the bishop or any religious uh, leader is something like questioning the God. So that is something which, will, which would be a blasphemy, a sacrilegious act for which you may get excommunication. Ba church er gota christianity er byabostha theke apni bohishkrito hote paren expelled hote paren ba ekhonkar byapare ek ghore hote pare ar ki tale koto gulo bishoy je gulo khub sadharon bhabe amra shabhabik bole mene ni that is something these are actually not something which is natural but something which are presented to us as natural so that the people accept them without question. So such consent was actually the result of constant brainwashing, constant training and constant supervision by the state in otherwise social institutions which apparently look like non-political. For example, schools, churches, in our country, the temples, the something like the hospitals, something like the cultural institutions, so it can, could be anything, anything, culture, anything related to religion, culture, education, it's everything. So in every social, cultural institutions, there are some values, some ideas which are preached in the name of something quote-unquote natural and we ab should abide by them without questioning. That is what hegemony means, the domination by concept. So when we accept something without questioning, that means we are accepting the domination of the center of power. Number two, that is, Gramsci talks about this apparatus of state coercive power which legally enforces discipline. Now, if, if, you, if you refuse to accept any particular dictate by the state or the people in power, so what does the state do? The state is actually imposes it by force. Say for example, if there is a law that you can't kill someone, you can't, you can't really beat someone without reason. You, you Actually, you can't beat someone. Say, you can't cross the road while the traffic signal is green. So you cannot cross the road unless it is red and you are you are allowed to cross the road. Now if you do, if, 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 you, if you defy the law, then what will happen? You will have to face punishment. So there is the police, there is the army, there is the law, there is the court, there is the conduct, there is a set of rules and regulations that you have, have to abide by the social sphere. Because unless we abide these rules, the state will punish us. Something like we have to accept, we are compelled to follow them in order to avoid punishment. So that is what Gramsci calls the coercive state apparatus. 
So finally, what is Gramsci in his uh, formation of the intellectuals? He actually sort of tried to say that this function of the intellectuals is to convince the masses because they are the opinion leaders. Ashle amra television e porday dekhte pai jader ke je bibhinno dhoron television e bibhinno rokom issues asche bibhinno bishoye alochona korte je talk shows hoy ekhane tader ke daka hoy tara bibhinno bishoye alochona koren ta tai shei alochonar pholafol ta ki hoy tadi amra dhora ja kono ekta rajnitik doler proti amra amader samarthan ba birodhitar jayga ta thik kori onek shomoy we are often guided to form our political opinions, our opinions on some social issue, some political, administrative, cultural issue, because we are motivated by them. So, because, so they actually function as the opinion leaders. So, what is the function of the intellectuals? The function of intellectual, of the intellectuals is to, is to manufacture concept something for a particular social issue where you have to make a sort of collective consent for something the function of intellectuals is actually to act as the propagator as the spokesperson as the mediator as the mouthpiece of the class in power to create, to manufacture, to develop consent among the masses about an issue which at the end favors the class in power. Thank you.